So thanks, Nicole, for, uh, for hanging out with me and just creating the opportunity here in this awesome space of the new central library, which has only been open now, I think, since November 1st, if That's I'm not correct. mistaken. Yeah. And you've been based here since then as a freelance artist. Mm -hmm. So That's do you right. want to tell me a little bit about how that opportunity came up? Sure, for and sure. And introduce yourself. Yeah, well, the new Central Library um, made this opportunity available for uh, local artists to have a space where they could continue their own practice but be sort of an artist in residence. So um, as you see, we're in this studio that has great lighting and uh, lots of space to work and uh, run around and paint things. So uh, a lot of us applied for it, and um, I was honored to, to get the first... Uh, placement, but it will be open for other artists starting next month. So yeah, definitely if you're an artist listening to this, you should certainly apply if you are interested. Fantastic, and congratulations on being the first resident in the new library. So I also want to congratulate you on your recent recognition as Art and having received the Artist's Choice Award for the BUDS Collective Northern Reflections outdoor exhibition. Thank you. And uh, <laughs> I've certainly loved, I've, I've, I've lived in Calgary for a few years now, um, but only came across it coincidentally during November, I think, and it launched in mid-November and ran till the end of December. And it was the second year, if I'm not mistaken, that, that BUDS were running that. Do you want to maybe give me a little bit of information about who BUDS Collective is, how they operate, and then how you got integrated in working with them? Yeah, and well, first I have to put in a plug for my window painting buddy and animator, um, Kyle Simmers who also introduced me to the project. That's how I found out about them. And uh, Kyle is a very talented uh, illustrator and animator, and they wanted a partner for painting the window, and I'm into murals, so it worked out, and our styles meshed, and uh, we came up with this idea of um, an augmented reality mural that shows on the outside someone in a winter scape, but then when you hold up an audio, um, uh, alternate reality, I'm forgetting the word, uh, augmented, augmented reality, device, excuse me, yeah. augmented reality, um, app, you can see it change into a different scene. In this case, we made it this indoor dance scene. And our, our idea was that in the winter, it can be really hard to stay active and to stay connected to people and, and moving around. So we kind of wanted to transform this winter experience into into one with full of connection and, and uh, action and movement and celebration. So um, we were very honored to be picked for the Artist Choice Award. And um, uh, the reception was held actually in the same building that we did our window mural on. Um, so in a way that that augmented reality mural came true. On the outside it was winter and on the inside there was a dance party going on. So we thought that was very appropriate. <laughs> Outstanding. Well, congratulations to yourself well, and to Carl thank for that. You. Yeah. And, and then to all the other artists that participated as well. Um, and it was a fantastic way to introduce visitors and Calgarians to explore the city and to explore the downtown and interact with art. That's um, for sure. Yeah, um, the amount of artists uh, was a uh, hundred percent more than last year and um, the the range of talent was was incredible Just backtracking a little bit how long did that artwork take for you to put together for yourself to paint the mural and then for Kyle to do the animation on top of that mm -hmm. how, how long does that process take uh, well first we would have uh, figured out what kind of concept we wanted so I think we we had a coffee and sketched out some ideas and um, I sent some sketches to Kyle and they told me what they thought about it and uh, then we we would have, uh, the next time we would have met would have been at the location. So it took us two days to actually paint the mural um, and then after that I would have created some extra illustrations, sent them to Kyle and then Kyle would have taken those and animated them and I think that would have been an extra day between the two of us, maybe more. So you know, uh, this isn't the first time we've done mural work, so I think we're a little bit more streamlined than <laughs> our first time around would have been. But um, in all, I think you could say with all the communications and, and coffees and sketches and, and artwork, maybe estimate about a week, all told. That's brilliant. <laughs> and fast-tracking art, for sure. It was fun. <laughs> so have you worked with Kyle before? Uh, not before that point. 
Um, we are both graduates of ACAD, uh, Alberta College of Art and Design here in Calgary. So we know some of the same people and that would have been our introduction. Um, but we are certainly hoping to uh, collaborate on projects in the future. So as I came into your studio, studio <laughs> today, I, was, I noticed your Send Me a Story initiative that's up on the wall. Mm -hmm. Do you want to tell me a little bit about what that involves and how you're, how you're working on that? For sure. Um, well, I had this idea of installing mailboxes around the city of Calgary in the public libraries. And uh, on, the li on the mailboxes is a sign that says, uh, send me your story. And there would be a little scrap of template piece of paper that people could write down a short story or a poem or a confession or a secret and send it to me. And uh, I've received a lot of submissions, hundreds and hundreds, and from those I would pick some and illustrate them uh, with kind of my take on what they would have sent me. So you can see those uh, posted up behind me um, side by side. And my hope is to, if I have time, to put them together into some kind of book and uh, make that available in the library collection. So people could check out their story, literally, and it would be beside that of their neighbors in Calgary. There's something that people are doing. There's something that's happening where people are needing to tell their story and are wanting to tell their story. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's, there's something about the person telling the story and sharing something. And in some instances, it needs to be confidential because of circumstances that they've been through. Mm -hmm. And then there's others about the people that are needing to hear the story and receive the story yeah. and bridging that gap. And uh, I think there's a real cathartic healing that comes mm. from that in some instances. And then it's just a celebration and a rejoicing in others where people are just able to tell a good story. Yeah. And, uh, and share good news for a change rather than I think negative right. news. Yeah, absolutely. I think uh, the way that we really get to know each other and empathize with each other is through stories because uh, when you hear someone's story, it, it kind of um, forces you to step inside their reality for a little bit. And when you get to try that on, uh, it's, it's harder to look at you know your neighbors as, as people that are outside of your experience. Like when you have a shared experience that, that creates a connection. Wow. Then transitioning that and taking the responsibility of trying to draw something and uh, infer something from what they've said, because they probably just scratched the surface with what they've told you. It's pretty onerous, but at the same time, quite a privilege. I, I try to have fun with it, honestly. Really? Um, I, I don't think my illustration was the be all end all of their stories. It was more like a a way for me to add my voice or my recognition of their story in with the mix of it all. Um, so I tried to, you know, with the funnier ones or the humorous ones to, to really bring that to life with an illustration or um, some of them were a little ambiguous and or one liners. And with that, I would try and kind of uh, take it to maybe a comedic extreme and infer something that was funny, but maybe not what they intended, you know, as a sort of joke between me and the writer. Um, and some of them are very serious stories. And for those, um, I, I try to communicate some of the emotion of what it felt like to read it. So, um, yeah, it's, there's no one approach to it, but in a way it's just allowing um, my visual voice to respond to their written one. Thank you very much for doing that. I think that's profound and very enriching. Um, have you got a mechanism where you're closing the loop and getting back to the, the, the people that submitted stories and mm. showing them what you've done? And have you had much feedback? Uh, I have had some feedback. Um, I'm not reaching out to anyone necessarily. Some have put their, their numbers or their emails in with their submission. Um, but I have had people reach out to me. They've noticed their story has uh, made it onto the wall and they uh, reach out to me through Instagram or, or Facebook or email and say, ah, you drew my story. And, and that's been fun to see. Uh, the response so far has been 100% positive. So Fantastic. I'm happy well, about that. <laughs> well, I look forward to the day that it is published in some form or another and is available in the public libraries. So For sure. Good on you. Congratulations. <laughs> Thanks. When I first met you recently and seized the opportunity to come and do this interview with you, 
you were actually painting, if I recall, an acrylic mm-hmm. of your grandmother. That's correct. <laughs> and uh, I, I didn't actually stop and take the time to say, this is awesome. And uh, congratulate you on that and just acknowledge the work. But uh, I look forward to maybe having a look at the picture a little later. But why your grandmother? Why that particular picture? Oh, well, I've wanted to do a series of portraits for a while now. And selfishly, I'm picking subjects that I care about, you know. Uh, so my grandmother, um, that one was a challenge because uh, I wanted to create a picture that was um, that really captured her um, her dignity and um, also her softness. So how to do that in paint, that was a challenge to myself. And um, portraiture is something that there isn't a whole lot of market for if you want to call it that right now but um, as an artist I want to keep growing and and that was something I wanted to push myself to do so I I picked some subjects that uh, were willing to be the victims of of my depiction (laughs) grandma was one of those obliging people (laughs) does grandma have a name uh yeah Ruth so on the back end of that do you want to maybe share with me a little bit about your family where you're from um and just a little bit of your journey. Well, um, I grew up in rural Alberta by Edmonton, um, and I, my mother always encouraged me to do art. And uh, I remember questioning her recently, like, were you ever worried, you know, that I would be homeless or something because I couldn't make it as an artist? And she was like, oh, no, that, that was that was never a thing. I just knew you could never do anything else. And so she really pushed me in that direction and bought me you know, all the crayons and let me cut up all of her cereal boxes and build stuff out of it and uh, make messes all the time as a kid. So um, that was sort of the beginning. And then when I graduated high school, I, I just still, I, I couldn't picture myself doing anything else. So I went to Grant McEwen University in Edmonton for um, their fine art program, two years of an undergraduate of fine art. And um, at, at that point, I realized that what I really liked to do was um, more illustration focused. I still have a fine art bent to me, but I liked the fast paced um, world of illustration where um, there were hard and fast deadlines and um, you kind of had to manage a business side of, side of it too. Not like fine art doesn't have that element to it, um, but uh, the sort of work I could do for illustration was, was what I was leaning to. So then I, I I uh, moved to Calgary to get an illustration major in a communications design degree from ACAD. And um, I graduated in 2015. And uh, about then I realized that I didn't know the first thing about building a business. (laughs) So unique power and ability to highlight um, realities that we don't see every day in in our Western culture. So organizations and... Uh, crowdfunded a a trip for 12 months around the world and uh, uh, my travels kind of found me in refugee camps and uh, disaster zones and uh, post earthquake um, territory and uh, places where there's a lot of political turmoil and um, I carried with me a sketchbook and, and as I was on that journey, I realized that what I really liked to do was tell underreported stories. I, I realized that um, as an individual, I still have a bias just like a media outlet would, but there's something about allowing people to, to tell their own stories and, and uh, reporting that back in a way. After a month there, I spent the last three months of my time uh, abroad in Greece on a small island called Lesbos, where what I um, wanted to keep doing. So uh, it definitely influenced my practice. So then uh, 2017, I, I threw myself into illustration full time. And, um, and um, upon my return, I, I compiled a lot of those and put them into a book as a gift for the people who had crowdfunded me. And um, right. what you're yeah. wanting to do, not just because you're good at it, but actually wanting to be passionate about and pursue art. On Abroad, a travel sketchbook. And you can find it under my name, which is Nicole Wolf. And um, 
yeah, it's full of full of sketches, paintings, short Instagram posts, um, my actual sketchbook scanned in, a few paragraphs of um, my blog and um, photographs of the actual places I would have been drawing. Have you had much feedback from this? Just yeah. from the people themselves i guess the end the, the, the people you illustrated would probably never get to see well actually uh, a lot have um i think that was part of the project was people really care about their stories being told so um, i always ask the permission of the refugees uh for example if we're talking about refugees i asked their permission before i posted their stories and portraits and um I then also told them about the book and they were okay with it. So actually, uh, some of them, because of the wonders of Amazon, <laughs> have ordered a copy for themselves while they're waiting uh, to be accepted into a country. So, wow. yeah, it's <laughs> wow. sort of fun. Well, once again, thanks and congratulations for, for being brave enough to go and then for having the heart to capture what you've captured. And I forgive me that I haven't had a chance to look through it, but... I'm eager to get my hands on a copy oh. and take a look through that. So I'll, well, I'll be sure to do that. Thank I, you very much. I'm really much. thankful to everyone who gave and made it possible. Yeah. So yeah. yeah, I'm standing on the shoulders of a lot of people sure. who care. And a lot of sadness as well. And, and people who have lost a lot and given up a lot to get a better life for, for their offspring or for family, right? Mm -hmm. I'm going to change. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> change the moment for a sec. Um, All the people that comprise it and they are incredible people um it's been a privilege to get to know a lot of the the faces behind the great art that i see popping up three um, favorite outdoor artworks that you'd encourage people to see just off the top of your head uh, I, I really threw myself into illustration with with no fallback plan really <laughs> so i can only really i still feel like i'm pretty new here but um, murals in Inglewood by my painting buddy Kyle Simmers. Definitely check it out um, right by Phoenix Comics, which is about to be rebranded into something else. Um, make it happen. And um, that that's inspirational, I think. Yeah, There were a lot of talented artists who contributed to that um, from Calgary, Canada, and around the world. So um, you can check out a Massive Cougar by Faith47. There's... Um, a abstract piece of art on 17th by Nasarimba. Uh, there's this great surreal piece by Katie Green on 10th Ave in the Southeast. And um, I also have a mural in there, shameless plug, at a bike shop, which uh, tells the stories of some Kensington residents who met at Chicken on the Way. It's really cute. Uh, they're an elderly couple and enjoying chicken on this box. And so uh, that's one of many that are uh, adding some some life to that already lively part of town. Beautiful, and that's been that's proliferated around the city. I, mean, I live up in the northwest, and many of our boxes up there have been um, arted up and are looking great. That's awesome. And uh, so so just so cool that it's drawn attention to a very some, some art. Yeah, mm -hmm. and all those. So just talking about that as an example, are those hand painted on, on location and then given some kind of protection or are some of them laminate material that's been put yeah, on? Yeah, there's a good mix. Um, the ones in Kensington were part of a screen printing initiative. So they were screen printed and then adhered to the boxes using a paste and sealed. Uh, the ones in Marlboro were hand painted using acrylic and then sealed if necessary. Um, and then there are some other ones around the city that were done using a uh, sort of vinyl wrap around the box. So it uh, depends which, which neighborhood you're looking at, I think. So aside from school, work or business, what would be your biggest draw factors to visiting and staying in Calgary? Well, I really like being close to the mountains and I think I'm not alone in that. I think that's why a lot of people love Calgary. Um, it's great to be able to take 40 minutes and be in Canmore and out of the city that's that's a gift i think also calgary has a lot of potential right now it's kind of still if if you're in, if you know the right people in the right place it feels like a small enough place that you can change your scene pretty dramatically um but yet it's big enough that 
uh, you have enough resources to actually do that. I love, I love that, yeah, like I mentioned earlier, a lot of people are definitely committed to making Calgary a better place, at least the people I know, and they're invested in creating their thing in this place. Um, I know a lot of people have left for Vancouver or Toronto, but a lot of, a lot of people have stayed. So that's important to me. So these last two questions are maybe a dream questions. Uh, <laughs> but uh, as a social influencer in the art community, if you were mayor, what would you want to do for the art scene in Calgary? <laughs> you did not prep me on these questions. <laughs> oh, no. If I was the mayor. What is the art community needing? Okay, that I can answer. I would equip artists to really understand the business side of being a freelance artist, business person, mix, hybrid. Um, I think a lot of us are good at our craft. We've put in the school, we've put in the time to become good at whatever it is we do, glass blowing, screen printing, illustration, uh, graphic design. But to get that extra bit of training after art school, the bit that, that tells you how to drop an invoice or how to make sure you get paid or how to find a style that suits you and doesn't trap you. Um, should you go the agent route or not? You know, little things like that. Um, from the artists that I've talked to, we've all cobbled together our answers to that through our own sleuthing out of what we want our career to look like through conversations with other artists who were just as clueless as we were when they graduated school. So I think if, if I could, I would help artists really, maybe, maybe is that a mentorship? I don't know. Uh, maybe it's something like um, a business school particularly for freelancing artists. I'm not sure. Um, maybe it's not even training. Maybe we just need to be better connected to each other and to opportunities. Um, yeah, I was in conversation with some of my artsy friends recently, and, and we thought that, you know, if hey, if we could hire somebody, like an artist assistant, who could stay on top of all the art opportunities that are happening in our city and you know, help us apply for them, or like <laughs> edit our, our proposals for us, that sort of thing, or um, even just keep track of our jobs for us. Like, I think we'd be able to go a lot farther and we'd have a lot more time being an actual art artist. Um, we all wear a lot of hats and I, I think I'm not alone in the frustration of trying to balance my time uh, doing my bookkeeping and also doing my thing. So. I don't know. I think we're still at a very embryonic stage in the art community um, in general. And so maybe Calgary will be a place where we begin to change the way it looks. But I think people who have a skill, um, a natural skill, so whether it be art, music, uh, drama, um, just, just those... And I don't want to limit it to the arts, but I want to remove it from the sciences and business per se. Um, are notoriously, are notoriously weak or poor at promoting themselves mm. and then doing the admin. And it is, I think, there is a place to try and understand where can the artists do their art, and not just have a middleman who wants to fleece them yeah. to get their to get bang for their buck. And to, mm -hmm. I mean, people need to make make an income. I understand that, but the notorious middleman who's gone and ruined things for many artists and that mm -hmm. speaks loudly in the music industry for sure and I, I don't deny in the visual Absolutely. arts as well um, so the equipping thing is profoundly important mm -hmm. but at the same time if it's going to suck the life out of what you do it would be great to find a mechanism or an environment do I you think you struck the chord there in that um yeah, there, it's a toss-up. If you get an agent, they handle the promotion and the, you know, the getting paid bit. Um, but then you run the risk also of like a large music label selling out with what you actually wanted to do and you have to kind of do someone else's bidding, right? So maybe if we could co equip artists to know what they want and what is... Uh, the, the level of quality that they need for some of those tasks. Maybe they could hire 
someone who could help them actually do that, right? Um, and then they'd still retain control over their look and their direction. I don't know. It's, it's a thought. It's just dreams at this stage. But maybe I'll hire someone. Because <laughs> it becomes a very fine line between when that person, that middleman, let's or the agent mm-hmm. starts dictating what the artist needs to do for popular demand mm-hmm. and to move stuff. And there's a time when you do need to actually do what the public wants just to get known and to get out there. But to stay authentic, I don't know how one stays authentic under the, under those conditions. So I hear your angst or, <laughs> yeah, well, just to well, be you. Right? Some can make it work. Like, um, again, I'm really new to this scene. Yeah. So I'm sure some of the other folks in the art industry could speak to this with much more authority and personal experience. But um, suffice to say, I'm at a place where I'm beginning to ask questions about how can we streamline this process? How can we allow and equip artists to be doing more of what they really love to do, which is their art, while not letting them be taken advantage of? Last question. I am Calgary. You're Calgary. What does it mean to be Calgarian? in your opinion? Uh, For me personally, it means doing my best to understand the place I'm in and to understand my relationship to it and then be responsible to give back in the way that I can, that I'm made to to give. Um, Yeah, and to understand my my duty as a neighbor to other neighbors. Yeah, <laughs> that sounds really mechanical. But I think, like, um, as a young person, I didn't really identify as Canadian until I went and traveled. And then I realized how much I do belong to my country. And similarly, as a Calgarian, I didn't realize I was really a Calgarian I because th- I, I came here for school, right, and stayed out of needing to work those are two things sort of outside of my control in a way um but until the media started referring to me as nicole makes her home in calgary nicole is a calgarian nicole is a proud calgarian and i was like golly well i guess i am like <laughs> you know i took someone telling me that um and so then i started thinking about it and i was like all right then if i'm a calgarian what does that mean how would i want other calgarians to behave toward me and how can I contribute to that? So uh, for myself, how can I give back what I look to get, right? So I think no matter where I go, it's like an opportunity to understand how to help people around me and how to change things for good, you know? I don't want to imply that Calgary is a bad place to be and needs fixing. That's not what I, how I see it. It's more just like, Man, if we could all take personal responsibility for ourselves and realize that we can all be part of solution, we can learn how to stop contributing to problems and really love people well. So I think that is my heart underneath all of it. Yeah. I don't remember if it was maybe in our brief discussion on Friday, but I think we, I think we, it was in a conversation with you. We alluded to the resilience of Calgarians and I think circumstance and history has shown that recent history. Um, so the ebbs and flows of the oil and gas market and the, the boom bust cycles. We, we see the Calgary flood and what happened in 2013 that came out of the flood, the stories that came out of the flood. And I think some of those things, and there are, uh, we were in a current economic depression again that's gone on way longer than anyone has ever cared or cared to anticipate or wished for. Um, But there's something about Calgarian resilience that is possibly unique to Calgary, but it does cause people to want to also see others succeed and not just fight for their own survival. Mm -hmm. And I'm hoping that in what you've shared and a little bit of the Calgary spirit and what I see um, causes us to actually want to see the best in others and cause others to succeed Mm-hmm. not necessarily us to succeed at other people's expense. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, that's what I'm going to wish for you and just trust for you that as you carry on hearing other people's stories, illustrating other people's stories, 
rubbing shoulders with the Calgary community and talking about life and illustrating life, um, that there really be uh, an acceleration and a promotion that happens um, just because of your outlook on life well, thank and, you. and what you're doing. So thank you very much for this time. My pleasure. And, and just for your open door and sharing your heart and for being willing to build relationships. So awesome. The honor is mine. <laughs> I'm Thanks very, very much. Very honored to be here in this space, and I've certainly felt uh, very blessed by everyone that's come in. So Wonderful. thank you. Yeah. Thanks very much, Nicole. Yeah, take care.